Hi, this is Shadi. What I'm about to share with you is a footage that Tom DeBlas shared. Now, unfortunately, I will show you the footage of the sequence that happened because YouTube is against this kind of stuff, even if it's for commentary and education and safety. And you have to understand that if they find something like this and they take it down, the entire viewership gets affected, not just that video. So please go watch it where I put it, then come back because I have, I have a lot of commentary and stuff to show you. So this here, the first image you see in front of you is the cop trying to restrain the suspect and controlling the wrist, which is very important. What's more important is that he's not doing any type of striking, whether it's with a baton or with his hands. He's trying to control him fully. And as you can see, he is twisted a little bit to the side. So, you know, as a grappler that the armbar is on its way. But when it comes to control, it's not the best in my opinion. But still, uh, it's a good example of just regular judo or jujitsu that we do in class being applied. Uh, in this situation and nobody gets harmed that's what's most uh, important here you see he spins it's a lot like the sequence that you do in rolling or grappling where you are mounted and then you get hold of one arm you're isolated then you do the fast spin and then from there you lay back and extend the arm now you have the challenge of releasing the arm because sometimes they grab their own if it's in no gi or the jacket if it's in the gi but here, um, you can still see he is still grabbing the far arm as well because it is still a danger. It is still, it can still be used against him. So he's not just targeting one arm to get the tap. This is a far different situation. And we'll talk about restraining both arms and the rest of the video, which I will show with you. And here, yeah, he actually lays there and tries to lay a cuff on both hands. Now, to be fair, it's not the best position to handcuff someone. You need to be either in something like the mount or side control. And from there, you try to get a hold of both arms and you put the cuff because here you're on your back. All your weight is down and spread and it's not on them. Very little of your weight is on them. And from there, the control is very minimal. And from there, your, your only chance is to handcuff them or extend the arm it's a you have to understand that submissions are can also be used as positions and not just for breaking the arm or any type of uh, articulation so here it's called ude hishigi juji gatame so it's a classic it's the first technique i've learned when grappling on the ground and it is still very uh, efficient you can see it in all levels so Again, when it comes to putting cuffs on, it's not the best. And I will show you some other uh, stuff. Now, speaking of arm bars, I did manage to get two of them uh, this weekend in the uh, team competition that I had. It was a lot of fun. Uh, first time I competed in a team format. Uh, and it was just all in good spirit. And we ended in second place, which was really cool. So now let's continue with the video. And here is an officer showing that control of one arm only can be incredibly dangerous here is the first example is that they could use the other arm to aid whether to transfer the weapon or they can actually use it to steal your own weapon as you are seeing here this is an efc video again you can watch the full video it's linked below and also here you see he is actually going for the gun so you have to be very mindful these submissions are also positions but you have to be very careful in these types of situations to actually eliminate both options and both arms in case you want to put the cuffs on so here for example he gets on top of the arm and then from there exerts a little bit of pain in order to negotiate and let go of the uh, arm the weapon so this is what it's called as ude garami in japanese or entangled uh, arms because you are grabbing your wrist, you're grabbing their wrist, and the whole arm is underneath going in. So it's a big entanglement of three arms and the grabbing of the wrist. It's called a double wrist lock also uh, in the West. So uh, it's a very efficient one here. When the arm is curled, it is targeting the shoulder. 
and what you do is actually lift up the elbow in order to finish up the lock and you have to have both elbows on the ground past the chest a lot of people try to finish it when having the elbow on the, the chest of their opponent and they try to finish it that's not gonna do it in order to truly isolate it you need to be far more in the front and from there you get to finish it so here look at Hickson uh, this is his self-defense instructional he is showing you that you have to bring it a little bit towards you as if you're brushing the mat then lift up the elbow now some of them do extend the arm to defend the lock but you can actually target the elbow from this one with the extended arm so what you can do is the same you're just lifting the elbow up very similar but it's underneath the elbow and the extended arm it will crush the elbow rather than the shoulder this is the mechanism you need to do in order to finish if it's lifting the elbow now let's talk a little bit about the positions so submissions are positions before they are submissions so let's take a look at a triangle a triangle it can be everything you need it can be a pin it can be a wrist lock it can be an arm lock either on the elbow or the shoulder or it can be a strangle so you have everything in one so it is the same here it's about controlling every option and isolating them so the tap should come even before you are uh, putting any pressure it's because they are completely helpless so after you have secured a position whatever it may be there's really no need to just crank it and pop it because all you're doing is injuring them i'm talking about your training partners of course and here you see an arm lock from the side with the free arm so you have one arm trapped in the triangle and then the other one is here being locked with the elbow kind of like an arm bar and you can do that to obviously release a weapon uh, here is also another one where you are actually locking the inside arm and this is targeting the shoulder rather than at the elbow here is another example and you see you tie up the arm with the clothes and here from another angle you grab the wrist and you push it away locking the shoulder so it's a very versatile position the triangle it's not a submission there's just so much to it here is another arm lock on the shoulder with the free hand there's just so much you can do with a triangle and this is just one example of all the other positions that you have so you need to treat them as a position to isolate all their options away from them look at this arm lock it's absolutely brilliant so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below please watch Tom the Blast's video and consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content and your support would mean greatly this was Shadi and as always thank you for listening